Thanks for listening to Mandible Judy, Season 3, Episode 5. So far, we are entirely listener-funded. We'd love to keep it that way. Please head over to patreon.com slash mandiblejudy and check out our perks for funders, including the Splatter University original soundtrack on vinyl, our dead flesh thumb drives, and lots more. Stay tuned after the end of this episode for information on our brand new spin-off miniseries, Under Dead Water, coming soon. There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There were lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. All right, Mother Lodestone. How long do I get before the racket starts? <sighs> Nothing to say? Well, that's totally fine with me. Okay then, let's enjoy the quiet. Keep the pressure on it. How are you feeling, officer? Uh, I've been better. It's crazy. They were attacking and then suddenly stopped and just wandered off. Right when we came outside. Uh, Mrs. Caterbeck? That's her, over there. Wait, you've got an injured officer here. Why is the military here? I don't want you on my property. Mies, take your men around back. Yes, sir. You can and you take the far side of the house. All right, men, let's move. He's just going to ignore him? He's SWAT. He's got to play soldier for a while first. You stay with him. I'll call an ambulance. Are you Lieutenant Brady? That's me. Dr. Nobili? Nobili. Magnus Becker says to send his regards. Pick it up, you We do appreciate the cooperation of the police forces. We've secured the area. Magnus Becker? You are not welcome here, Doctor. I knew you people would show up eventually. Mrs. Caterbeck. Can we go inside and talk? We've been authorized to find- Arrest her! <sighs> These people are responsible for everything that happened. Renee, it's all right. Go inside and calm down. I'll take care of this. Is it that stone? Everyone just wants Judy's stone. Judy's stone? Where is this stone, Renee? We don't know. Far away, I hope. I'm not helping you. I want you off my property now. What business does a pharmaceutical company have here? Commander, I see no reason to remain here. We can coordinate the search via cellular. Is anyone home? Well, what's this about? Uncle Wally? Hmm, well, what do you got there, a baby? No, Uncle Wally, it's me, Bonnie. Bonnie? Maggie's daughter, your niece. Maggie's daughter. How about that? All grown up. Well, what are you doing here? Come on in. I know, it's late. I need to talk to you. Uh, sure, sure. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you since, uh, I don't know. How's your mom? Well, you remember she moved up to Massachusetts for work? I stayed here and finished school. The last time you saw her would have been Grandma's funeral. Yeah, guess it was. <laughs> I'm glad you moved back in here. I love this old house. Yeah, well, Mama's gone and I'm getting old. She wanted one of us to live here. and I do a lot of fishing, you know, so. I remember. I remember a lot about this place. You look tired. You okay? <laughs> uh, well, a lot has happened in the last few weeks. I think I got myself into something that's not going to be easy to get out of. 
and I didn't know where to go. Well, you you just rest a while. Whatever it is is going on, Uncle Wall can help. Hey, uh, are you looking for someone? Hi, yes, we're looking for Bonnie Galliard. Do you know where we can find her? Uh, Marco? Yeah, I know you. Casey, right? You worked with Bonnie. Yeah, we're, we're looking for her. I guess you know about what happened with Dr. Fuzzy. I was there, with Bonnie. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. So you, you saw Kenny there. We're trying to find him. Mr. Darcy thinks he could help him. Connor Darcy, we were hoping Bonnie might have some idea where Kenny went. We need to get to him before the police do. Agreed. The police are not prepared for this. Last night we... Judy and Kenny came to the Caterback's house. We were there. We barely got out alive. We know what it is now. It's the rocks. From down at the marsh. Uh, Mr. Darcy is a geologist and he, and he did some tests. I know that sounds crazy, but these particular rocks have sonic properties. Yeah, we've seen it in action. Do you have any idea where Kenny and Judy went? No. We had to get out of there. We found a stone in Judy's bedroom. It was pure black with glowing red parts. Judy wanted that rock pretty badly. Bonnie got away with it just in time. My guess is that Judy's out there looking for her too. Uncle Wally, what happened to the roof in here? Oh, don't worry, don't worry about that. I just stay over here on, on this side of the room. But there's a hole. Doesn't the rain come in? Oh, that, that's okay. I, I don't mind. It's all right. But it's almost winter, and is that a nest? Is something living in there? That's just the raccoons. It's all right. They they don't bother me. Raccoons? You should maybe patch that hole, Uncle Wally. Maybe we should get some help and patch no, it up. Or- no, 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 don't worry about that, Bonnie. Don't worry about that. That's nothing to worry about. All these boxes. Is this all Grandma stuff? Yeah, well, she never threw anything out, so there it all is. I recognize some of these books. She used to read to me. Oh, and her necklaces. She always had a necklace on. Or two, or three. Right, I remember. She said they protected her. How strange it seems now. Oh my god, her zither! How about that? Hmm. Didn't even see it in there. She was playing this in my dream. That that song she used to play? I can almost remember how it went. She taught me how to play it when I was young. This one, and, and then... And there, and then... That's it! Listen! Hmm, calm's a forest, she always said. Right. She said that.
Casey, come in, come in. This is Marco Mazzanti, Mr. Howard. He's looking for Bonnie, too. Glad to meet you, sir. Uh, hello, Marco. Is that a synthesizer I hear in the other room? Dr. Schifano is doing some more tests with the frogs to see how they respond to the sound. Sit down, please. Marco was there with Bonnie Sunday night at dental services, and he saw Kenny and Judy again yesterday. That's right. Bonnie and I were checking in on Mrs. Cater back, and they came in the back door. Kenny was hurt, sir. He was shot. Shot? But Catherine fixed him up. Who shot him? I think it was Dr. Fousey. But then Judy stopped him. It was his leg, and it wasn't too bad. Catherine is a nurse. She used to work for Dr. Fousey. I... I just don't know what... what to do. I can't... He's out there. And someone's gonna kill him. We'll find him, Mr. Howard. We're gonna make sure we get to him first. Interesting. That got your attention. How about this one? Yeah, that's that's the one your your grandma used to play. I hadn't thought about that in years, and then I had the dream. And now here I am again. Thanks for tuning in to Season 3, Episode 5 of Mandible Judy. Our cast this week was Aaron Lillis, Lietti, David Steele, Billy Priest, Bonnie Bogovich, Andre Martinez, Noah Graham, Mike Hall, John Constantine, Chris Burke, Gary Scales, and Julia Nervi. Under Dead Water is our brand new spin-off miniseries, which will debut next Wednesday, January 27th. The first episode will be free to the public, with subsequent episodes for patrons only. You can become a patron of Mandible Judy and help us keep the story going at patreon.com slash mandiblejudy. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We love to hear from our listeners, so contact us on any of those platforms or at our website, mandiblejudy.com. See you in two weeks. Bye.